here. Nobody's blocking anybody's way. 
we are changing the culture. We are trying to put in way that paying it forward will bring you good karma, right? And help someone. Tonight, try to find someone that you could help. Everybody is looking, everybody needs something every day. But tonight, just look for someone that you could actually take their hand and lift them up. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to be moderating this panel. And uh, sorry, just a second. Um, I'm going to start the panel. So thanks to our panel. Um, I'm going to start one by one. We have uh, Yasama Yossi, Shayeste from Stevens, and we have uh, Cyrus Mubafari uh, from Pistol Notes, and we have Morteza uh, from Amazon. I call him Morteza because we used to work together. So, <laughs> and we have Alba. Alba, she is she is um, the start. This she's the um, founder and CEO of a startup called Simba, and 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 she's gonna. I'm gonna let her talk about her amazing platform. Um, let's start from Alba Jan since she's virtual and give her priority. Abhijan, tell us about yourself. Thank you so much. I wish I had the opportunity to be with you in DC, but I'm fortunate that we have technology that makes this possible. Um, I am a co-founder and CEO of an all-female tech startup. As you mentioned, it's called Simba, and it's a SaaS tool, B2B enterprise, and we help companies digitalize their internship program so that students can access opportunities from all around the world on their laptop. And so our platform features project management, engagement, um, and really streamlines internship experiences. Uh, we're starting an internship phase and excited to tap into the gig economy soon. So understanding how we can improve diversity and inclusion practices in the workforce by creating real data and insights with our cloud-based Excited to be here and share a little bit more my, about my experiences as an entrepreneur. Thank you, Alvajan. Um, Yasajan, tell us about yourself. Sure. So I go by Yasu, but my full name is Yasan, I'm sure you say. And um, I, I have a little mixed background. So I, I came, um, what, 19 years ago to US from Morocco, Persian background, so a lot of mixture here. And, and, and started my way up, um, you know, going to undergrad, grad, and finally, you know, landed in this wonderful opportunity at Stevens uh, 13 years ago. <laughs> so this is my first full-time job, and uh, wear a lot of different hats, and I've been always in technology department, but done a lot of different things, and started focusing more on quality engineering, um, and then soon became a lot more involved in management, so, I'm now directing my team uh, globally, um, and uh, yeah, very excited, very uh, happy to be here and, and join this great panelist group. And uh, it's uh, and, and like Teresa mentioned, we've been really focused on um, really figuring out how can we be more diverse uh, at our workplace and promote women specifically, but not just that more diverse group. So. Uh, very interested that this topic at this time happens to be uh, way closer to my heart as well. So. Thank you so much. Uh, what does it do? Um, sure. Uh, You're good. Okay, good. All right. Uh, my background is mainly in, in investment management and uh, financial analytics. Uh, I worked for a small hedge fund in the past. Uh, but what I really pride myself is how I have used uh, financial analytics, big data analytics, to benefit the, uh, the public and, and research. And uh, I'm back right now working at Amazon. Uh, I really think the, the thing that it really um, helps me wake up in the morning and go to work is how we're using cloud to benefit um, the public sector. And, and one of the things is that as they migrate to cloud, they have money freed up to invest in the research they have to do to cure cancer, to uh, to do the good for the people, and or take the money and invest in new technologies like artificial intelligence. For example, <coughs> using Amazon recognition, we're helping with stopping human trafficking. So that's very exciting things. And uh, and in the past, I also worked uh, with University <coughs> System to build a fund. It's a twenty million dollar fund that is called USM Momentum Fund, and what it does 
it uses financial engineering with helping provide investments to biotechs, the guy who wants, who has a dream of uh, curing cancer or the guy who has a big dream of helping the public, but he doesn't get the money to get his research in the market, we will provide that seed money to them. And uh, I think these are the things. And one of the things that I'm really glad that it's being talked about here is that we are sitting together and helping women get into the market. And uh, this is really what uh, efficient markets is all about. The best talents is the job. And women have a lot of talent, and we should just fight the biases out there and get them to the market because that's really when everyone will benefit from. Thank you so much. Uh, Sai. Hi, I'm Sirius or Sai. I don't feel like I should sit on this panel given what everyone else has done, but happy to be up here. Um, so I am the talent acquisition manager at Fiscal Note. Uh, Fiscal Note helps businesses better interact with their governments. So the silly example I like to give is, you make Tadik in Virginia, you want to take it to Maryland, but the people in Maryland don't want your Tadik. So we help navigate legislation and policies. Um, so you're able to reach out to your congressmen and senators and say, hey, we're trying to get this over there. Um, for me, a big part of my job and what I do every day, half my battle is bringing the talent in, right? So finding that diverse pool, and that's the diversity section. But the other part of my job is the inclusion part. So once you're actually here, how to make you feel good about actually being at the company because a lot of people don't think about that side of it. It's just how do we get women in? How do we get a diverse set of people in? But then how do we keep them? How do we make them feel safe now that they're here? So I'm um, excited to be here and uh, thank you again. Oh, thank you so much. And that was a great point, the, the diversity and inclusion part of it is the point that every company these days are focusing on, that we brought in you know, force, labor force, and we hired them. We want to include them our decision making and actually create some you know changes for future. Okay, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over. So starting from um Yasu Jam, um, I'm gonna start asking questions and everybody you know from the panel you're feel free to, to jump in if you have any, any anything to add. But um, what do you think what is the biggest challenge in in hiring process? I would say right now, two main things, if I had to categorize them. One is the just competition, you know, the, the competitive market. So understanding the market is a big deal, and you know, I know we've been invested a lot to really try to um, understand the data. Mm -hmm. Where are we with benefits? Where are we with salary? With what's everything going on? So then you're in a, in a better advantage that you can get and recruit better people, better talent, and not just limited. So. Competition is it's always comes to my mind as one thing, and since we're global, you know that gives you a different type of challenge because you got to understand different markets in, in different spaces. And the other thing is just finding the right talent. Really, I mean, back to everybody's point, um, it, it's a whole other thing, um, especially in this area. I don't, I don't want to necessarily um, uh, with tech and being techy and IT, you know. It's a little bit more limited, I would say, than just because I know both of the other markets. Uh, there's a lot of government jobs, so what they, you know, contracting jobs, and unfortunately, sometimes they limit um, access to what the employees can do or cannot do. And, and so technically, they may not be at the level that I'm looking for them, or just developers, or anybody in tech department looks for them. So that becomes a more challenging. So how do we create, um, you know, look for potential in our hiring process, so uh, we're not limiting those talents around, and how do we really um, figure out maybe curriculum or some training programs, especially if we're having that challenge out there. So I think that's another, way of keeping ourselves uh, open to different people who may not have had the opportunity to deal with you know, database testing or be at, you know, with a lot of microservices now. And but there's so much stuff that changes every day in technology and it's just amazing. And it's just harder to find that specific need. Uh, so we always have to balance and compromise and, and look for the right, um, so that's kind of what I see it right now. Yeah, I mean, to piggyback off what you guys were saying, I mean, clearly it's the talent pool that's around here. If you see long-time government contracting, right, you 
there's two things in DC, Starbucks and contracting firms. So um, <laughs> what I will say is I think we are on the cusp of kind of that flip coming. Um, we're starting to see more and more um, organizations like 1776 General Assembly, organizations that are trying to bring technology to the forefront. And they do a lot of free classes. So I empower anyone who has even a fleeting interest in you know, any sort of back-end or front-end technology, um, whether it's building a website, working with APIs, a mobile application, Try some of these free classes out and see if it's something that you are interested in. It's free, it helps build your resume, and you might find a whole new passion that you're super interested in, and it breaks you out of sort of the cycle of jumping from, and no offense to anyone, but the Accentures to the Booz Allens, to the, 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 and it gives you an opportunity to create something yourself. Thank you. Um, oh, John, do you have any comment about hiring challenges at the market right now? Sure. Um, I would also go as far as to say, um, you know, not necessarily, I mean, it's very difficult to find the right talent, but that's also because um, we have to really push um, students to prepare for STEM fields. I have a, a really good friend who founded this app called GoCode, and he's, he's only a high school student. He was 16 years old. He founded this app, and he said, there was nowhere I could go to learn how to code until I go to college. So there weren't enough resources out there for him to start preparing um, for coding and and learning, so he said he went on to YouTube to teach himself how to code. So I, I really think that there also needs to be a major push in the education system um, and socially to encourage students to start preparing for the fields that are needed in the next sector, as well as you know, um, finding the right talent in the future. Thank you. Um, I think definitely the, the pool of talent is a big challenge with IT, uh, given the unemployment rate in IT sector. You know, that is a lot lower than any other sector. So a lot of times you actually, with Amazon, I know you had a lot of Microsoft people who are hiring and taking a lot of money, but still uh, there's so much challenge to find the right talent. Uh, I just want to add uh, two more things to it. Uh, after you hire, the bigger challenge is to retain the good uh, talent, and then that's done through empowering. I think empowering is a big part because you want to level the field for everyone to shine, and then the, it's, it's keeping them. So after you empowered everyone, how do you make sure people are recognized for the good efforts they're putting in so you don't lose the good talent? So that's another challenge as big as the other one. So. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. That's you know, very useful. Um, we have um, one big question that I think is, this takes, it might take a long time. And it's what type of HR policies and programs are employed by your company to improve diversity and I'll take that one. Um, <laughs> right, the source. Right, right. Um, I think we need to be careful about saying policies and procedures when it comes to targeting certain demographics, just because if we do say we have a policy that's targeting women, well then all of a sudden, hey, guess what? We've created a bias against men, um, and vice versa. So I think the bigger thing to do, um, and we've partnered with organizations, um, actually, uh, I've asked our, the CEO of Free Collective to come and join us today, it's finding ways to uh, target other demographics and other organizations outside of the big job boards. Indeed, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, those are all great. But truly finding other ways to engage uh, the market and being able to find folks that are interested but just don't know how to find you, right? I work for Fiscal Note. I'm sure maybe one person besides maybe my parents have heard of that. Um, and then we've got Amazon and Cvent, right? And so, I mean, even for your organization, I'm, I'm sure there's a challenge of trying to get your name out there. So. That diversity pool, a big part of it comes through that partnership and those channels. Um, so definitely, I mean, this is a, a great opportunity to do that, and that helps with those policies. It's something where you don't even need to think about it at that point, because you're reaching into a totally different pond. There's different fish. Sorry to turn people into fish. Um, mm -hmm. But that is something else. And then this ties into sort of my introduction, but in the sense of having policies and giving folks that empowerment to create groups like this. I think, you know, an organization like this is powerful, but it's external. To create organizations like this to empower people that are within an organization, minority groups within an organization, to then educate the majority that are there, that helps retain the talent, that helps with the inclusion, um, and all of a sudden you start seeing that have an osmosis effect throughout any company you're part of, whether it's 160 people or 250 billion people at Amazon, so. <laughs> Government agencies, most of them they do um, 
Sure, government agencies have to, and that's just part of their bag. Um, for us, uh, we are minority owned, so that's something. Um, we are constantly looking to iterate on that. Um, and our big challenge is breaking away from the bigger, I guess the bigger tackling factors, right? Do we have enough African Americans? Do we have enough women? Do we have enough Latino population? But now all of a sudden we need to start thinking about the age gap. We need to start thinking diversity of thought, because the worst thing you can do in an organization is create an echo chamber, right? We all voted for one candidate. That candidate didn't win, so we're all angry about it, and what are we gonna do? When you have a diverse pool, then all of a sudden you have a diverse sense of thought, and so age ties into that, ethnicity backgrounds tie into that. And so what we try to do is branch out of going to the same places that everyone else goes to, and partnering with smaller firms and smaller organizations will help you do that. And then again, policies internally is giving folks a platform or a voice to be able to talk about things. So using intranets, so internal communication channels, having ways to talk about issues, being able to talk about holidays that po folks might not be aware of, that's something else that is a no-brainer for some people, but then other organizations, especially smaller ones, don't think about it. So whether it's Ramadan, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, any of those things, being able to give those individuals a platform to have those conversations immediately gets rid of the need to have a policy or procedure, which then has huge ramifications on the back end. Thank you. I'll let John, you give a platform and uh, dealing with government mm -hmm. agencies so far, what have you learned about um, their policies or what they're targeting? So um, I actually, I'll definitely answer that as well, but I'd love to take some eyes at the um, as a startup, um, we have the opportunity to really craft a lot of our policies and um, you know best practices from scratch, and it's very exciting. And as a, as millennials, where you know we get to observe companies that have been existing for hundreds of years, and we get to say we don't like what they're doing, and this is how we want to do it. Uh, right now, we're an all female team, so I think we need to have some more men. <laughs> um, but. Um, as far as um, putting some policies in place, some of the best practices that we've seen are like Salesforce. They have a chief uh, equality officer. So um, I don't know if your company wants to have another CEO, but um, that's some of the new evolving terms have been assigning positions in leadership to actually handle diversity and inclusion in addition to HR teams. Um, and from the government front, um, we have really been working closely with their internship program and, and on that front, that's why they love our software so much because internships are the leading tool for pipeline generation of work. And with our tool, they can finally have data and reports on internship programs from not only the current year that they're using our software, but if they use our software five years out or 10 years out, they can understand how they're shifting and, and really using data to the, the certain policies that they have for inclusion in the workforce. Sure. Um, I think you know everybody had some good points here, but essentially, first I think understanding where we are as a company. You know, that's our data again. Looking back at it, I think it's going to be very important, and we've we've done um, a lot of efforts towards that to know what's the percentage of you know women, what's the percentage of women in leadership versus just as a whole. You know, what's the percentage of other diverse group, um, you know, being uh, Latinos or other groups that was mentioned before. So um, that's just a good starting point to know and understand that how to tackle that. And um, but specifically for, um, I'll speak a little bit about the women um, side of it for a diverse group and how do we push that. We've, we've tried to do a lot of different things. Um, um, so including our CEO has been very supportive of that. And we started Women Leadership Group uh, for five years ago, if not more. And uh, it was very specific. We uh, initiated and launched um, a mentorship program for that. And it's been growing very, very nicely. So every month they have, um, I was part of it more so, and now I'm kind of you know, handed off to other people to run it. And it's, it's, it's very useful to not only connect and, and you know, but uh, back to retaining talent. So when you have things like this to support, other diverse group being women or other groups, it's, it's really important to they feel connected. They feel that, okay, there's something for them. And I also continued that kind of vision. And last year, I'm proud to say that with the help of some co-founders here that I have, 
uh, my team, we, we launch a women in tech program, very specific to the tech. So we meet every other month and we talk about different sort of topics, uh, internal and external uh, speakers. And, and just continuing that kind of route is very going to be going to be very helpful. But but I like to as I also mentioned or somebody else um, is about how do we promote you know also younger folks you know sometimes you know it's just the pool of talent and pool of computer scientists as women for example are just limited right so how do we help that and giving back to community is to encourage and partner with other groups and we're. Again, um, I'm so proud to say uh, next week we're gonna do an hour of code, um, you know, uh, with the coordination of the code.org, and just going to an elementary school and, and teaching code uh, for about an hour. So it, it's, it's, it's really kind of helping in, in thinking a little bit bigger and not just as a company. Um, so anything like this, I think, is very helpful in reaching out to. Um, I think Sai, you mentioned something about. Um, if you have a smaller pool of groups, let's say we realized, um, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, Latinos, we don't have many, right? So whoever we have, how do we talk to them and create a group, a supportive group for themselves so then they can, you know, engage other people they know outside, whether it's with clubs or, or groups at the universities, whether with their friends, with their, or, you know, be it anything, right? So that type of um, giving that empowerment that is, is being talked about is going to be very important to make that group feel better, supportive, and, and give them kind of the option to increase that and help us be part of the solution so uh, we can get and, and elevate um, whatever diversity um, goals we have for the company or for ourselves. So. Can I jump in on something? So one of the simplest things you can do is actually use your space to house certain events like this. So we house uh, Women Who Code. So once a month, folks can come to our office space. They have full use of um, our Wi-Fi, snacks, sodas, anything that we have. And again, it sounds so simple, but people don't think about this ever. It's just the opportunity, like we're using a cement today, right? So um, we partner with them. Uh, one of our co-founders is um, Pacific Islanders, so we partner with a group called Kapal, so young millennials come, um, they're able to talk about their business initiatives that they're doing, so using a space um, as a shell to just house people who can't afford to do that um, really goes a long way. Sure, um, I think uh, Amazon got it really right with uh, inclusion and diversity um, by the principles they use, and I, and I, and I think it's a secret sauce, their secret sauce is just hiring. And uh, they have 11 principles. And what's very interesting about Amazon is that they just don't talk about it. Every day we talk about these 11 principles of customer acquisition. Everything we say, we need to tie it back. And uh, within these 11 principles, two of them that are very interesting for me is, first of all, uh, have the backbone and disagree. And I think it's very important to, if you want to, if you want to empower women, I think one of the key challenges I see uh, is assertiveness is sometimes taken as a, it's not really taken well for a woman to be assertive, and I don't think it's right. I think we need to empower women at work to be more assertive, and uh, let them, it's good to disagree, and I think that's a good thing with Amazon, really encouraging people to have a backbone and disagree if they don't agree with something. They ask you about you, they ask about it in your interview, and they talk about it every day, uh, but more important than that is that one of the principles is that a good leader is someone who is usually right. And one of the interview questions I had was, the guy asked me, are you, are you usually right? And I give this ugly, dirty answer. I said, statistically, not as many times as I want to be. I think I am because you are just programmed to think you're right. But, uh, but really, the answer they're looking for, and it's an interview tip in a way, uh, is that you should say that uh, you encourage diversity. And you are more right if you encourage diversity, if you are, if you look at the data. And uh, I think all these ideas that encourage diversity and encourage people to speak up and going within the culture is really how you uh, create a diverse culture and kind of let it uh, keep it going, you know? True, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I wanna just add one to what Yasmin and Sai was uh, saying about education and creating that um, pool of talent these days they're all interested in computers and IT. And I encourage
encourage that you, if you have kids, think about actually teaching them and putting them, expose them to that type of knowledge. So they will have, that's something that in the future, it's like, you know, knowing ABC alphabet. So they mm -hmm. need to, reading and writing and coding is going to come, just a part of it. So that's, uh, that's a great point to make that, you know, going to elementary school, you know, my son, he, he likes to learn, he's eight, he likes to learn coding. And he wants to learn how to build robots. So kids these days are all interested with all the technology and access to, you know, all the information out there. It's great to look at the future. But coming back to the pool right now and all the challenges we have, we are doing all our best for our next generation and creating, well, creating environment for improving our, our generation and creating a better world for our next generation. And um, that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm very positive that's going to happen. So one um, last question before I open it up to the um, audience for, for their questions is, um, what type of technical skills is in demand today? And if you see anything that's going to be demanded in the near future, three to five years? <laughs> Alba, do you wanna go first? too much in, in today's panel, but it's definitely when we talk about when we talk about diversity and inclusion, I think it's something that we should always engage as well. So that is um, something that we are focused on with our startup team. How do we make sure that everyone we bring on the team not only brings on important skill sets, but is very different to the dialogue and the conversation that we're having in addition to diversity and ethnicity and race. Thank you so much. Um, Sorry, do you have yeah, uh, I will uh, piggyback off of and say full stack's probably the way to go. And the analogy I like to use is um, it's like you're a history major, right? But your focus, find your passion or excitement. So you're a history major, you go all the way back to the beginning of time, to present day, but you really love the Egyptian era and that's kind of where you're at. So I think the great thing about technology, whether you're front end developer building websites, back end developer, you know, structuring unstructured code, quality engineer, making sure everything actually runs properly, a DevOps engineer within the cloud. Find that one thing that you're passionate about and creative about, and then have a little bit of the knowledge of everything else, and that's really gonna help you stand out. It's difficult to say, go out and be a full stack engineer and know 600 different programming languages, um, but that is a great foundation and place to start, and then find those hooks, those things that really interest you and make you excited to wake up in the morning, um, and you'll find those opportunities. I think there are many, <laughs> but, but I, I, what I wanted to share is full stack is actually a big deal. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of the future. You, you can no longer be knowing one little area and be just that expert in that one little area. So nowadays, all the walls between roles are kind of getting broken or, or, or shading or graying out. And you have to be able to relate to another role in some ways or shape. You may not be, you don't have to be an expert, but you have to extend your knowledge enough so you can understand what that other person is talking about. So in these days, you know, we talk about agile a lot, right? In the sprint team, you know, for people who are in the tech department, I mean, it, it's a big deal. So we have all the roles and you talk and you see each other every day and you're working on one project to be successful. So how do you really get enough of technical skills? And um, depending on the company you work with, depending on 
uh, their tax back is going to be different areas um, that each of you may need to be uh, really digging in and, 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 and you know learning and getting trained in or just exploring and there's so many free things out there um, and don't be afraid you know the last thing you do because sometimes you know we you know myself you know I, I got into management in, in, in a faster way so um, one thing I learned is don't let that get get you away from the technical side of it so you have to be understanding of it because to lead a team you need to understand what's going on and um, and you have to balance it now. That's another challenge I'm having with finding the right talent for leaders out there uh, to, to manage my team is is how to have that leadership skill, the management, the soft skills. We talked with other people here that you know, and then yet have the technical background uh, to be able to question and, and, and to guide your team. It's going to be a, uh, uh, a lot of effort, but it's that that's excitement. That's the challenge. That's the growth. And um, there's a lot of open sources that's happening. You know, everywhere you go, you talk about, talk about open source uh, <laughs> stacks. And so, you know, including, um, you know, sort of microservices or APIs are all over the place now. Everybody talks about cell architecture. So understand those concepts, understand. And then um, once you find a little bit more passion in it about it, um, maybe dig in a little bit more so you can have more intelligent discussions with your um, team members. And, and if you don't have it yet, you know, force yourself, encourage yourself, or ask for the opportunity to sit in the table, you know, and listen in and grasp, and then go Google it or figure it out. Because that's how you can start building that information and, 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 and tech side um, for, for yourself. Thank you. Actually, that's my uh, fun question, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to break it down into three parts. First of all, what is going to be a hot thing? Uh, my suggestion is uh, do a PR FAQ or write a journal in 10 years from now. In 10 years from now, if you're reading the newspaper, what's going to be on top? Uh, people right now, if you look at everywhere, it's cloud everywhere. But think about, think ahead. Think what's going to be good and popular and mainstream in 10 years and step there. One way is to look at websites who track activities. For example, Upwork is one. They have the trends of what's hot. So recently, blockchain is on top. Uh, we have uh, Amazon, a uh, uh, bunch of Amazon services also in second and third, uh, which kind of help moving us toward unified communication as a service. And think about it, things are moving toward, uh, the, things are coming together and you, you're going to be seeing a lot of benefits of synergy. Look at your iPhone. You used to have a radio, a camera, a web browser, and everything is moving together. And look at the, look at the organizations. Now you have an Ethernet line. You don't have landline anymore. You don't have the old legacy systems. Everything is moving toward diverging and, and unified communication. So that's the future. Uh, so get as much as you can in there. And uh, definitely security is the high growth. And I think interdisciplinary is going to be very huge. Anything artificial intelligence and security, that's going to be huge. That's the other area. And, and I'm, going to, I'm going to give a second part to this answer also. And I'm going to be wearing my economist hat. And I'm going to say, as the price of the artificial intelligence and machine learning drop, the value of judgment is going to go up. So, Judgment skills are going to be huge in the coming years as we have cheaper machine learning come into the market and artificial intelligence. So make sure you improve your judgment by including other opinions. Try to get as much opinion as you can. And, and by knowing people's leadership styles are different. Everyone is great and they have their own way of being great. Try to see that. Not everyone has to, being a good leader is not about being assertive or being dominant. Everyone has their own leadership styles. Always see the good in people and know how they can be excelling in your team. Uh, the, my famous picture to kind of talk about this is a picture of a, a, there was a cat judging a giraffe, a bird, a monkey, and an elephant and said, to be fair to everyone, we're gonna judge who's gonna go faster up the tree. So of course, monkeys can go faster, but each of them are a genius. 
in their own way. They're, each of them have their own skill sets. I mean, I'm not going to compare people to, to animals. No, you can't fish and, and, and... No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and catch the knife. No, I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to bring the point. <laughs> Um, but to circle back, if you want a checklist, if you want to build websites, CSS, HTML, JavaScript languages, if you want to do the back inside the house, can't go wrong with Python right now. So, yeah. well, one other addition. Um, it's interesting because you mentioned judgment, right? Um, it, it's two ways. So we see a lot of data. So data is going to be very big. So using data um, and how to make decisions with it. However. The other sense is sometimes, what, what happened to common sense? You know, and, and, and sometimes we use a lot of other tools and data too much, and then we forget about our own common sense. And that's what I also, unfortunately, you know, keep seeing. So it, you know, how to grow the soft skills of individuals is going to be also interesting and, and important back to what you were saying. Sure, that's right. Um, so this, um, that's, um, in, in a whole, whole IT and tech company, if people that have really good soft skills, they grow faster. So that's a, that's a, uh, normally that's a part that you could improve way better if you want to grow faster. <laughs> so I can tell you with experience. With a company full of introverts, if you are a little bit extrovert, it goes a long way. So, <laughs> yeah. so with that being said, let's just um, have it for our panel. And Awajan, thank you so much. Um, we. Um, Thanks for your time. Thanks for all the comments you made. I'm going to open it up for audience for their questions. Um, if anybody has a question, just come forward and we can give you a microphone. I've just got a comment. Sure. I think oh, you're all well, rock stars. Well, it's well, great to see you there. Oh, thank you so much. So proud of every one of you. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Comments on a little bit of a more nuanced aspect of diversity that I think is critical.